welcome once again, church family and special guests to our Sunday message time. I trust and pray as we come together today to fellowship around the Word of God. Once again, we'll be grateful for this opportunity and thankful that God is still allowing us to share the Word of God as He is. I trust and pray that the message God has uh, laid upon our heart at this time will be a blessing to you as a believer, as someone that's not a believer, perhaps the message also will be that which God will open your heart and you'll receive Christ as your personal Savior. Once again, we realize that as the Bible depicts, we are definitely in the last days. Uh, it was identified as perilous times, and such is the case that's taking place today. And as I look out over what's taking place, I find that the latest information that's available, that we see increase in crime, we see increase in uh, domestic violence, we see increase in child abuse, we see a anger and an unhappiness and a discontentment that's never been as visible as it is today thanks to the modern technology that we have. If there is one thing that's truly missing that's of a great need. And of course, the great need, uh, the Bible depicts in John chapter 10, verse 10, that Christ came to give us life and give it to us more abundantly. And to our sadness, we can find that that abundant life is not being realized by countless thousands today. And the abundant life is what I believe that the Apostle Paul explains to us in Philippians chapter 4, verse 11 and 12. And while you're turning to that, I want to share a message this morning on how to be content in life. You see, God would not have said that he came to give us life and give it to us more abundant had he not told us how to have that life. Now, I know that the abundant life to many simply means prosperity. But that's not what he was talking about. While it might include that, the abundant life, ladies and gentlemen, is the life that only Christ can give someone. It's a life that a peace Christ gives that you cannot find anywhere else. It's a contentment that only the Lord can provide, no matter where you look. Even the Bible goes far as to say if a man gains the whole world and loses his own soul, what shall he give in exchange? And still, still we're not accepting what God says about the contented life. And what a tragedy as we see all of this turmoil that's going on today. I want us to look as we look at this time to Philippians chapter 4, verse 11 and 12. And I've entitled the message, How to Be Content in Life. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned. And I want you to pay attention to the word learned. Because what we're going to share with you concerning the contented life has to be learned. It's not normal. It's not natural. We're in rebellion against God. There's no good thing dwells in the human nature. And so, in order to have the contentment that Paul's going to share with us, we have to pay attention to the Word of God so that we can learn how to be content. So that we can have that contentment that the Apostle Paul had and that God would have us to have likewise. Notice as he says, In whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content, I know both how to be abased, that means have nothing, and I know how to abound, that means have everything. Everywhere, 
in all things, I am instructed. Now, we must learn from the instruction that the Word of God is going to provide for us at this time in order to be content. We have to have proper instruction. And ladies and gentlemen, contentment cannot be found anywhere other than through the Word of God. And we have to learn. In order to have that contentment, we have to be instructed and we have to obey that instruction. Notice what else he says. Both to be full and to be hungry. Both to abound and to suffer need. Our Father in heaven, as we come before the throne of grace at this time, we want to thank you for your grace and your mercy. We want to thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ and his willingness to go to the cross, shed his precious blood for the atonement of our sin. We're thankful for the gift of the Holy Spirit that will guide and direct us in all truth. Today we ask for anointing that only you can provide for this message. And Lord, help us to present this message as you would have it presented in the power of the Holy Spirit because it's such a tragedy and it's such a trauma today of the discontent that is throughout our land. And Lord, we pray through this message today that those that are in search of contentment will find it and they will embrace it and they will accept it as a gift of God. And Lord, I pray now that you have the honor and glory from the message and we'll praise you in Christ's name. Amen. As I've said, Paul said he learned from instruction. From instruction. You see, contentment is not normal. It's not natural to the flesh, to the unsaved person, or to the natural person. And so Paul said, I, I learned. I learned through the instruction, and I want to share with you this morning, God willing, the instruction on how Paul learned to be content. Number one, turn with me to Philippians chapter 1, verse 21. First of all, Paul learned that Christ had to be the purpose of his life. Christ had to be the purpose of his life. For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. You see, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus himself said that he was the only one that could provide the peace that we needed. In our original state, we're in enmity with God. We're alienated from God. And the Bible tells us very plainly that in Christ, in Christ alone, he said, for me, to live as Christ. You see, in order to try to find contentment outside of Christ, it's impossible. It's absolutely impossible. This world has no peace that's lasting. Notice it. We find in Luke chapter 16 and verse 13, no servant can save, serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in mammon. You see, Paul states that either self or the Savior is controlling our life. And without a salvation experience and a new birth only provided through Jesus Christ, there cannot be contentment. There cannot be contentment. We must be born again. The Bible once again states very plainly, what shall a man gain if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? And the Bible's full. We remember very plainly Solomon, who had so much. Look at it. The Bible tells us very plainly, though, if we are not born again, we cannot have peace, and we can never be contentment. Because Jesus said very plainly to the believer, we must realize that we are a sinner. We must understand that Christ is the only way to be forgiven. We must understand that except we own our sin, confess our sin, and trust him in death, burial, and resurrection, and ask him to forgive us and save us, we cannot be born again. 
and being alienated from God, there's no way for humanity to have peace. Because peace, Christ is the Prince of Peace. And without the Prince, there could be no peace. He said to his disciples after they had been born again and called, he said, I give you a peace that the world don't understand. And ladies and gentlemen, the evidence of all the trauma and the discontentment that's in taking place today is that Jesus Christ is missing in the life of those and they're seeking for a contentment they'll never, never find. Never. Because he is the Prince of Peace. And except they have that relationship with Jesus Christ. And Paul learned that. Paul learned that. When on the road to Damascus, he said, Lord, what would thou have me to do? When he had that new birth experience, he was forever changed. And he realized that that's where contentment began. That was the first part of becoming content, is to be made right with Jesus Christ. To remove that alienation that he had between him and God. Then secondly, secondly, look at Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. After he realized that he had to have Christ as the purpose of his life, he realized that Christ had to be the pattern of his life. Look at it. Philippians 2, 5. Let this mind be in you. See, the natural mind is at enmity with God. But the mind of Christ is given to those that have been born again through the Spirit. He shall give you the Spirit of God and He shall guide you in all truth, which is, which was also in Christ Jesus. What is your pattern of life? Look at Romans 6, 16. Know ye not that whom ye yield yourself servants to obey? His servants ye are whom ye obey? Whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness? Is your life lifting up Christ and bringing glory to God? This world has no lasting pleasure. This world is in enmity with God. This world has nothing to offer but disobedience to God. And notice what it says. The Bible says, is our life lifting up Christ and bringing glory to the Father? If not, we can't have peace. There's no way to have peace unless that relationship is right with God. There's a void in the heart that can't be fulfilled any other way than that new birth experience, that indwelling of the Holy Spirit, that being made right with God through Jesus Christ. There is no lasting peace outside of Jesus. Paul was a man bent on destroying Christ. But he found out that Christ was the answer in the void that he had. And he became a great servant of Jesus Christ. Look at it. Christ is the only pattern for life. And if I'm not willing to surrender all that I have, I'll never have contentment. Never, never. Look at Philippians chapter 2, verse 13 through 15. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmuring and disputings, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. If you, like the Apostle Paul, will surrender your life or give Christ as the pattern of your life, because the Bible said in Christ we can do all things. It's through Christ that God provides all things. Notice that. Then number three, he realized that Christ was the prize of his life. Look at Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. Brethren, save people. See, he never realized this. 
until he understood very carefully that he had to have Christ to have purpose in life. He had to use the pattern of Christ for his life. And then notice, the prize of his life was, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. And we studied this before. It simply means he's admitting that he does not know everything. And may I interject something here that's just come upon my heart? Uh, that would be rare today because we have a world who has become authority to their own self. But notice that the Bible said, what? But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. While Paul didn't know everything, the one thing he was for sure about, number one, his old life was forgiven. The day he confessed his sin and accepted Jesus Christ as personal Savior, he was born again and became a new creature in Christ, and his sin debt was paid in full, and there was no condemnation that he would ever face. Secondly, he knew that because of being that new creature in Christ, that his life would be blessed of God because he'd become a child of God. And the Bible said, My God shall supply all your needs through Christ Jesus. Thirdly, he knew that eternal life was secured. He knew that once that he'd accepted Jesus as personal Savior and was born again, that it was eternal life. One day to be absent from the body would be present with the Lord. He knew that. No wonder he was content. No wonder while he was even waiting to be beheaded. No wonder while he was in the, in the darkest part of his life. Contentment swelled in his heart and swelled in his life. Why? Because he knew he was right with God. You know why the world is such upheaval? Let me tell you what's really going on. People have a fear of death and meeting God because they know it sooner than they thought. And let me tell you something without that relationship with Jesus Christ, you ought to be in fear. Because you're going to stand before God and you're going to give an account of what's been done. And even to the believer who's wasting their life are going to be ashamed when they have to stand at the judgment seat of Christ. Not condemned for sin, but give an excuse of why they wasted that life. That's what's wrong today. I'll tell you the greatest fear that man has and he's a liar if he doesn't say so until he's born again is that of dying. Standing before a righteous God, a holy God, and giving account for his rebellion and sin and rejection of Jesus Christ. Listen to me and notice what Paul thought. For no wonder he was content. He said, the fear of man bringeth a snare. But he'd made peace with God. And if this world would fall on Paul upon his face and cry out to God and confess their sin and, and say, Lord, save me. God would give that contentment. God would give that assurance. But as long as it walks in rebellion before Christ, as long as they deny the gift of God, there's going to be a discontentment. Look at it. Paul was looking forward to the prize in Christ. What was that prize? Look at 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 8. No wonder he was content. Henceforth, from this time, from this time, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Oh, listen to me. Listen to me. Paul was thrilled beyond one's wildest imagination because Christ was the prize of his life. He was going to spend eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ. When once he was a chief of all sinners. The greatest enemy in that time period that Christ had had. Was now one of the greatest servants that God used. Oh listen to me ladies and gentlemen. That's why people are discontent. You, 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 you just look around. Just open your eyes. Open your ears and see and listen. The days are growing short. The midnight hour is approaching when no man can work. 
Christ is pre prepared to come back at any moment in the twinkling of an eye. And while many deny it, it's fear of having to stand before God. And that fear is not of God. And there's no need to be fearful because you can confess your sin and accept Christ and be born again. Or as a believer, you don't have to fear being ashamed as you stand at the judgment seat of Christ and account to God how you wasted your life. If you confess your sins, He'd be faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Oh, listen to me. In number four, then Paul was content because he realized that Christ was his power in his new life. Look at Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. Paul's strength was the Lord. He was the one that gave him power to be victorious over sin. He was the one that would provide the power for him to walk in that new life. It was him, Christ, that would prepare him to be able to stand before the Lord without regret because he walked in the power of God. Look at it. He learned that it was not his way, but the Lord's way until we learn, ladies and gentlemen, we don't have a better way. We don't have nothing but a corrupt way. He understood that his relationship had to be what it ought to be to have the victory he needed. Look at Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. God will never ask you anything that's unreasonable if you'll just surrender to Him. Surrender to Him. Surrender to Him. Notice it. Be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. No wonder Paul, no wonder Paul was content. No wonder he understood from the instruction he received that contentment is in Christ and Christ alone. There's no other way. There's no other way to be happy. There's no other way to be fulfilled. There's no other way to be content. There's no other way to have peace unless you know and are in a relationship with the Prince of Peace, the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, that you would learn that lesson. Oh, that I would continue to be learning that lesson. Oh, what a change would take place in our world. What a change would take place among people. All of this disarray and, and disaster and tragedy and everything would be so limited if we would just accept this ex instruction and we would obey it. Nobody's outside of the grace of God except by refusal to come to Him through Christ. Jesus said, I come to seek and to save that which is lost and we're all lost. There's no discrimination against Him. We talk about everything in the world thinking it'll bring us content. But nothing, ladies and gentlemen, nothing. Moses learned that in an early age. He said, I chose to suffer with the people of God that enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Moses realized when he tried to take his life in his own hand, what a mess he made. What a mess he made. But once he realized, once he realized that God was his only answer, and when he surrendered to God, look at how God used him. Oh, folks, listen to me. Nothing's going to change. I don't care what you have. I don't care what you don't have. I don't care who you are, where you are, what you've been, or anything. If you really, really, really want the contentment that only God can give you, it'll be through Christ. So let me encourage you. Right now, right now, bow your head. If you can, if you can, bow your head and accept this. Lord, I come to you. I understand today that I'm a sinner, that I'm in enmity with God. But because of you going to Calvary, 
because of you shedding your blood, making the atonement that only God the Father would accept. I ask you to forgive me and to save me, Lord, in Jesus' name. Then, child of God, you may try to mask it, but let me tell you something. There's no real peace in your life. There's no real contentment in your life unless you know without a shadow of a doubt you're in God's will. I don't care how long you've been saved. I don't care how quick you got saved. Contentment and peace only comes from strict obedience to God. Well, there's a lot of camouflage going on. There's a lot of hypocrisy going on. But deep down inside, there's, there's, there, there's turmoil. Oh, let Christ give you that peace right now. Right now. Lord Jesus, as a believer, I played the part of a fool. I've been foolish. Perhaps I, I thought that, that I was missing something. And like the prodigal son, I thought the world would give me that peace. But I played the part of a fool, Lord. And so I want to confess it. And I want to come home. And I want to get back right with you. And I want to walk in the paths of righteousness with you, Lord. For I ask it in your blessed name. Father, as we come before you at this time, please, please anoint the message. Please, Lord, take it and, and use it to touch hearts as you would have it to. But help every listening soul ever that will be under this message to realize there is no contentment outside of Jesus Christ. There is no peace outside of Jesus Christ. There's no hope outside of Jesus Christ. And yet he's available to whosoever will. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. To the believer who's, who's wandered, wake him up. Reach down in your, your kindness. The Bible said the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. Remind them, Holy Spirit, remind us who are saved if we've wandered to come on home and we'll confess our sin and ask you to forgive us and restore the joy of thy salvation. Bless the message now, Lord, as only you can, and we'll praise you in Christ's name. Amen. Please stay with us for a presentation on a small detail of what God wants to do through Christ in salvation. But until we meet again, may the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.